Hey guys, so today we are going to start our acids and bases unit. This is just a little intro on what we're going to be getting into. Uh, so first off, acids um, are something that produces a hydrogen ion in a solution. So most of the time if you see um, hydrogen as your first element in that compound, then that is most likely an acid. Okay, so some properties of acids. Acids have a tart or sour taste to it. So something like lemon juice, that's sour and tart, that's gonna be acidic. They are also electrolytic. Um, from our previous unit, we defined an electrolytic compound as something that produces electricity. Okay, we do have both strong and weak acids. Um, acids will cause indicators to change colors, um, and we'll get into that in just a second. And then if you combine a metal and an acid, it will produce hydrogen gas, and that's also something that we'll get into in just a second as well. Okay, so a few more things. Um, if you have an acid, your pH is going to be below 7. It turns your litmus paper red. So what you see here, this image right here, is blue litmus paper. So if you drop a piece of, um, a drop of acid on that litmus paper, it's actually going to turn red. It's going to change colors. This is what uh, we were talking about earlier as far as an indicator will change colors. Okay, and also what I was saying earlier, chemical formulas generally start with hydrogen. So HCl, H2SO4. Okay, your compound is going to start with a hydrogen. Okay, so a lot of these um, reactions are going to be either a single replacement reaction or a double replacement reaction. Um, and most of the time, when you combine an acid and a metal, you are going to produce a hydrogen gas and a salt. Remember, we just find a salt as an ionic compound. It's anything that contains a metal and a non-metal. Okay, and then in a double replacement reaction, when we combine an acid and a base, we'll always produce water and a salt. Okay, again, a salt is an ionic compound. So examples of some acids, we have hydrochloric acid, um, which is the acid found in our stomachs. We also have lemons, soda, as well as coffee. Um, this is another reason why uh, they say don't drink too much soda, don't drink too much coffee, because it's actually highly, um, it, it's actually acidic. So that's where it starts wearing down the enamel in your teeth and stuff, and your teeth start to turn all gross and yellow. Okay, so um, acid naming rules. So if you have a polyatomic um, and you have a hydrogen in front of it, that's going to be an acid. Now, if your polyatomic ends in ITE, um, you are not going to use hydrogen or hydro as a prefix, but you are going to change the ending to OUS. Now, if your polyatomic ends in ATE, again, no hydro in the beginning, and you are going to change the ending to IC. Okay, now if you have a polyatomic ion and it ends in IDE like chloride, okay, you are going to use the prefix hydro in the beginning and then again you're going to change the ending to IC. So something to help you remember um, the rules for naming these acids is handle acids carefully so you don't get a case of atic-itis. Okay, so again, if it ends in ATE, it's going to change to IG. If your polyatomic ends in ITE, then you're going to change it to OUS. Okay, and then again, if you have a polyatomic, you are not going to use the prefix hydro in the front of your name. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples so that way um, you can make better sense of these rules. Okay, so with these three examples right here, the first thing that you should notice is that they all start with H. Okay, so that lets us know that it's an acid. 
and then after it we only have one atom after it so chlorine fluorine and bromide now if you didn't know how to name acids you would just simply name this as uh, hydrogen monochloride hydrogen monofluoride hydrogen monobromide so they all end in ide so if you take a look at our rules we have a monatomic compound uh, or ion rather and it ends in ide so that means we will be using hydro and we're going to change the ending to ick okay so if this is hydro um a monatomic then that means for the first one it's going to be hydrochloric acid okay and basically you want to repeat these rules for the next one so the next one would be hydrofluoric acid and then lastly we would have hydrobromic acid okay now when we don't have monatomic um ions they're going to look something like this so of course hydrogen is still in the front but you'll notice that we have polyatomic ions after it so sulfate we have carbonate and then we have nitrite okay so remember for polyatomics you are not going to use the prefix hydro in front of it okay but you will change the ending of the name depending on what your polyatomic ends with so because this ends um this is sulfate it's actually going to be um very similar to the main element it's named after so sulfate is actually going to be sulfuric acid okay it ends in that ic Okay, so we also have our next example, carbonate. So it would be carbonic acid. Okay, and then lastly, we have uh, nitrite. So it ends in I-T-E, so it's not going to be ick, but O-U-S. So it would be nitrous acid. Okay, um, so hopefully that made sense. Just rewatch it if it doesn't. All right, so this brings us into bases. So base, a base is something that produces a hydroxide ion, um, an OH ion in a solution. Okay, so some properties of bases, and uh, they are going to be bitter. And the way that I remember that um, is bases are bitter. They both start with the letter B. Okay, because remember that acids are tart and sour so bases are bitter okay um bases are also considered slippery a lot of the soaps that we use are bases uh, hand soap shampoos they're all bases okay even bleach is a base they are also electrolytic there um there are both strong and weak bases as well and of course the indicator is going to change colors as well okay so your ph this time is going to be greater than seven on the ph scale uh, your litmus paper is going to turn blue this time so if you use a red litmus paper okay and you drop a base in one part of that litmus paper it's going to turn blue now um if you go back to a few slides you'll notice that the blue litmus paper turns red if you add an acid well if this is red litmus paper and we dropped an acid here it's actually not going to change colors this red litmus paper will still stay red if you dropped an acid um, on this litmus paper okay uh, some examples of bases we have sodium hydroxide soaps antacids drano and bleach okay so my favorite example is antacids because um if you just look at the name antacid it sounds like anti-acid and we use toms or antacids when our stomach is feeling upset so when we're producing too much acid in our stomach, we take an antacid, okay, to kind of help neutralize the pH in our stomach so that way it settles down, okay? Um, so naming bases, this is actually so much easier 
the naming acids because all you simply do with naming bases is that you name the metal um, in the front and then of course OH is hydroxide so K is potassium and then of course OH is hydroxide so the name of this base would be potassium hydroxide so if we have for a second example magnesium and hydroxide then the name of this base would be magnesium hydroxide okay a lot easier than naming acids all right okay so there are other definitions of acids and bases so arrhenius acids and bases okay so he defined an acid as a hydrogen containing compound that ionizes to yield a hydrogen ion in a solution it focuses on what is being produced as a product and acids they produce a hydrogen ion okay and bases Okay, they produce a hydroxide ion. Okay, so acids produce hydrogen ions, bases produce hydroxide ions. Okay, now these two, Bronsted and Lowry, they felt that the Arrhenius definition was too limiting, so they took it a step further. So they defined acids as a hydrogen ion donor or a proton donor. Okay, and then bases, they considered bases as a hydrogen ion acceptor. Okay, so if we take a look at our examples here. Okay, so if we take a look at NH3 and NH4, you'll notice that NH3 gained a hydrogen. Okay, that means it gained another proton. Okay, so that would mean, or actually... Let's go ahead and take a look at water. So water, H2O, became OH. So it's lost a hydrogen. It's lost a proton. So that would mean that um, because ammonia accepted that hydrogen ion, it is the base. Okay, it accepted a hydrogen ion. It's a base. Now because it produces ammonium that we can consider that it's conjugate acid okay it has an extra hydrogen so it's basically your conjugate acid it's um, they're the opposites of the other so a base and then a conjugate acid it is what it's what is produced after the reaction okay so we can also take a look at water again water donated its hydrogen ion so it becomes an acid or it is an acid in this case and it produces its conjugate base hydroxide okay so another example if we have hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid okay it it uh, donates its hydrogen ion okay and it leaves chlorine all by itself okay and water water it also it gains that uh, hydrogen ion okay so hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid donated its hydrogen ion which makes it a base and it produces chlorine and chlorine will be its conjugate base Okay, again, a conjugate base is what's produced after that acid donates that hydrogen. So that would make water. Water accepted that hydrogen ion, so it makes it a base. And it produces um, H3O as your conjugate acid. Okay, now... Um, if you need further explanation, there are wonderful videos on YouTube. Um, so you can watch this link right here. I'll post it in the info section if you need more help as far as what conjugate acids and bases are. Okay, so amphoteric, I'll give you a little hint. Okay, if we go back to that previous slide, I will tell you that water is amphoteric okay so if you pause the video just for a second take a look at water okay so if you notice in the first reaction 
water is considered an acid, but in the second reaction, water is considered a base. So what amphoteric means is that it's a substance that can act as both an acid or a base. And of course, this always depends on what water is being combined with. Okay, oxides of metals are basic in nature, so that would mean water would act as an acid. Okay, but if you have soluble oxides of non-metals, they are acidic in nature, so that would mean water here would act as, um, as a base. Okay, all right, so that is amphoteric. Okay, so now strong acids and bases, strong acids and bases, they are those that ionize completely in a solution. Remember when we say ionize, that they completely separate in a solution. The hydrogen will separate from the chlorine. The sodium will separate from the hydroxide. Okay, and that's what ionizes means. Okay, now weak acids and bases, they are those that slightly ionize in a solution. They're not gonna completely separate. So some examples of that would be ammonia and acetic acid or vinegar. Okay, and then tooth decay is also caused by a weak acid, which is a lactic acid. Okay, so a more of a vis uh, visualization about strong um, acids and bases is that they are strong electrolytes. Because remember, strong electrolytes, be, what makes them strong is that their ions completely ionize in the solution, which makes them good conductors of electricity. The positive charge and the negative charge gives the electricity something to bounce off of, okay, which enables your light bulb to um, burn very brightly. Okay, and then some examples of acids and bases, uh, sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid. We also have sodium hydroxide and barium hydroxide. Okay, now weak electrolytes, they partially break apart into its ions. So if you take a look at our little beaker, you'll notice some of the molecules are still together. Okay, and we only have a few ions. So this is gonna conduct electricity very poorly. Okay, we only have a few positively charged and negatively charged ions, so your electricity doesn't have that much to um, travel through. Okay, so you're gonna be producing a dim light bulb. And then examples of weak acids and bases, um, we have vinegar as well as ammonia. Okay, so this concludes our um, day one introduction to acids and bases. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to comment.